Good evening and welcome to the Seth Joyner Show. The Philadelphia Eagles, everybody, are three and zero. Oh. One of only three teams remain remaining at this point at three and zero. Oh. Okay, so let's let's jump into what's going on with the Philadelphia Eagles because um, as they move to three and zero, oh, um, the offense looked like a pretty darn good offense last week. Um, I don't know, you know, what Nick Sirianni and what Brian Johnson did last week, but they obviously used the time to actually um, work on, you know, rectifying and remedying um, what's what's been going on with this offense. Um, I give them a lot of credit because, you know, in a lot of ways they moved off of and moved out of what it is that they like to do and what they normally like to do. And that that, my friends, is pretty much, you know, less RPO and less read option um, and more of number zero. Um, I get it. And in, in today's NFL, it's not sexy. It's not, you know, what everybody wants to do. It's not even what the analytics say that you should do, running the football. But, I mean, you guys let me know in the comments because, you know, in the, in the second 10 minutes, well, the third 10 minutes of the show, I'm going to start taking some some questions that you guys are posting. But I want to know, do you guys see what I'm seeing, that there's been a resurgence of the run game, not only for the Philadelphia Eagles, but for a lot of teams in the National Football League? And I've been saying that for a long time, that there's not very many quarterbacks in today's NFL that can truly, truly survive, um, you know, throwing the ball 40, 50 times a game. You need a running game. The running game is the quarterback's best friend, and the running game is what your offensive line really want to do more than anything else. Um, but that's that's what I really wanted to see last night. I wanted to find out, hey, will this coaching staff take the 10 to 11 days that they had in between the Thursday night game and the Monday night game to break down the film and figure out some ways to try to figure out how to get this offense back on track? By no means was it perfect. I mean, Jalen Hurts was 23 for 37, 277 yards. Um, he threw a touchdown. He rushed for a touchdown. But, you know, there was really one ill-advised um, interception that he threw. Um, and that was the, the F under route. Um, he had DeAndre Swift coming out of the backfield. They got crossed up in their communications. He threw the ball out. DeAndre was breaking in. You know, he throws an interception. Um, the other interception is just a hell of a play by the safety on that side to come from the middle of the field and get over and actually get that ball and get both feet down. Um, sometimes you got to give credit where credit was is due. And that um, play was phenomenal. Hey, listen, guys, don't forget to like. Don't forget to sub subscribe to the Seth Joyner Show on YouTube. Um, tell everybody you know. Um, I got a special guest for you guys tonight. You guys are going to enjoy it. In the second half hour of the show, um, Tommy Davidson, comedian, actor, is going to join me. And um, we're going to have a good time, man. Because, you know, Tommy loves, he's a good friend of mine. He loves football, loves talking football. But, you know, he's a comedian, too. So we all need a little comedy in our life. And I'm pretty sure if I know Tommy, he's going to say something and do something, you know, to to keep us all laughing and, you know, keep it, make it light. You know, we should be having, you know, one of those days today after the Eagles, you know, come off of Monday night showing everybody in the nation um, what kind of football team they are. Um, they're, they're, they're rebounding back. Um, they haven't gotten all the way back, but they're getting there slowly but surely. I think there was one for five in the, um, in the red zone and last year in the red zone they were a 68 percent conversion team um in that area so i'm just trying to figure out you know what's going on maybe it's a one game anomaly um i'm not sure what the circumstances were but i can tell you this um the passing offense is looking up the rush offense is just hitting on all cylinders right now all cylinders um you guys realize that the eagles are rushing for on average, 187 yards per game on the ground. Um, 258 or 259 last week, and then they follow up again this week 
with another um, 40, 40 carries um, for um, another 201 yards this week again. So there's a lot of good things going on, you know, and, and when you don't play your players in the preseason, um, uh, I, I had a chance to sit around on Sunday and watch some football. You talk about some ugly, ugly football. Um, it was amazing to me um, how many teams seemed out of sync and how many teams just didn't have it working. They just they didn't they just didn't look good. Um, and some teams kind of figured it out, you know, and they're starting to trend in the right direction. Um, and I feel like the Eagles are one of those teams that are trending in the right direction. DeAndre Swift, 16 carries, um, 130 yards, 8.1 yards per carry. Um, now you guys understand why it is that you, you hear me chiming in all the time about how the team needs to run the football and how much, how least, or how less sense it actually makes when you hear people talk about, oh, they need to stop running the ball so much and they need to start passing the ball. Yeah, there's going to come a point in time where you're going to have to pass the ball, but I also believe that it's imperative um, that you get your run game going. When you look at the offensive line and they are like, you know, just like little kids out there having the time of their life, the offensive line, and they, they, they want to play a physical game. They want to get all up in people's face. They want to, out physical their opponent um and you do that you know in the the run game it's hard to do in the pass game because listen in the pass game you know they're on the defense on the run game my goodness what makes this run offense so good is you got guys like lane johnson and um cam jerkson you've got jason kelsey landon dickerson um, Jordan Mailata and Sue Opeta stepped in for um, for for Landon Dickerson yesterday for I think almost the the whole um, second half of the game. You know, Landon hit a guy so hard that he kind of he hurt himself. Um, but these guys are dominant right now. In my opinion, they're the best offensive line in football. You got DeAndre Swift, you know, who is a perfect fit for them because you know they're running this inside zone, and he's very good at hitting it where he needs to hit it full speed. Um, he's very good at just um, throttling down and being patient and letting the the, um, the the blocking scheme define itself. And um, they work synergistically really well together. And I'm glad to see that they're allowing the offensive line and, and the running backs to be the bell cow, if you will. And you guys know how much I hate that word. But – that's what that's what they've been, you know, 48 carries last week, another 40 this week. Um, they're dominating the trenches. They're dominating the line of scrimmage. And when you have that kind of domination, when you want to throw the ball, you're going to be able to get just about anything you want. A.J. Brown had a day of days of Jalen Hurts 37 passes. 17 of those targets went to A.J. Brown. Uh, but I think A.J. Brown said last week that the conversation between he and Jalen Hurts was not about targets. I don't know if I believe that. I think anytime you see a quarterback having a heated or a um, a enthusiastic conversation with his quarterback, it's always about the targets. Okay, it's always about the targets. I, I get what AJ was trying to do, love him to death. He's my guy, but at the end of the day. He was talking to Jalen Hurts about targets. I don't care what you say. That's 14 targets for nine receptions. Um, and he pulled in 131 yards uh, worth of receptions. An astounding 14.6 yards per catch. Um, really, really excited about what I see uh, with this offense. And, you know, like everybody else is trying to figure it out. Hey, the Eagles are trying to figure it out. On offense, they weren't perfect, but at least, you know, they got some air, um, you know, through the they, – they got some some yards through the air with the football this week. Um, I, I I had Ike Reese, you know, on my TV show earlier this today. We taped it, and I asked him, I said, I said bro, do you think that somehow, some way, um, this win and as decisive as it, as it was 
And with Hurts getting back on track, passing the ball, and the Eagles continuing to run the ball, you know, pretty darn good. Do you think the fans, you know, feeling some sense of ease? And he started laughing. It's only, it's only, you know, um, Ike can laugh. And he was like, "Come on, man, we in, we in Philadelphia. You know the answer to that story." Um, but the one thing you guys can be happy about is the fact that your Philadelphia Eagles are still three and zero in spite of not having played their best football yet. I want to jump over to the offensive side, the defensive side of the ball, because listen, um, the Bird Dogs, and I think I'm gonna try to re, I'm gonna try to give them that nickname, the Bird Dogs. They're birds now, but they used to be dogs. Jalen Carter, Jordan Davis. Listen, these kids are growing up right before our very eyes, and they're playing dominant football against professionals in the National Football League. One guy is in his first year as a rookie. The other guy is in his second year, and you could really give it, you could really call it, you know, his, his, his first year because he didn't really play that much after he got injured last year. But when you watch them, they are like men playing amongst boys. I mean – they're just tossing people around. Most of the time, you know, when you get a double team, it's really difficult to handle double teams today because you got 300 pounds over here, 300 pounds. You got 650 pounds laying on you. And, I mean, they know how to split the double team. They know how to attack the double team. They don't just settle for being beat just because you got two guys laying on them. They fight through the double team. They know how to get skinny. You're talking about two big guys, one – it's probably about 230, 240. The other one, probably about 220, three, well, three, I should say. Three, three, 320, 325, maybe three, 335. The other one is, you know, got to be 310, 315, maybe even 320. And they're dominating. They're, they're, they're playing just one and two years removed from college football amongst grown men. And they are dominating. Now, don't get me wrong, because Cox and Williams and Tui Pelotu, who got his first sack of his career yesterday, they've been playing lights out too. I think the most the most impressive part about this defense right now, in my opinion, is um, has got to be the defensive tackle play because they're pushing the pocket and they're doing so much that these linebackers, who no one really thought that you would get much out of it, especially once N'Kobe Dean went down, they're actually playing some pretty darn good football. You know, when you look at the, the, the stat box, it doesn't look like they're playing all that well. It doesn't, you don't see the production, but I'm watching the game, and sometimes it's more than just making tackles and making sacks. Sometimes it's just being where you're supposed to be so that the other guy can make a play. You know, on the, on the safety, you get both defensive tackles that blow up the inside, and then – Morrow jumps over into the end zone and tackles, you know, they're running back for safety. Um, huge play, huge play. So their play is affecting everybody. It's affecting how everybody's playing. It's speeding up quarterback's clock. It's getting pressure. It's making teams one-dimensional. You do know that the Philadelphia Eagles are only giving up, I think, 48 yards per game over three games on defense, on the ground. They're, they're only giving up an average of three yards per carry on the ground, okay? Um, that's huge because if they can get a lead from an offensive perspective and then the opponent can't run the football, now you force them to have to throw the football. And now, in my opinion, you're playing right into their hands. Um, I need I need to see – I need a sighting. I, I, I don't know about you guys. I think I saw um, a couple of comments out there. But I need a sighting. I need to see – um, um, Hassan Reddick show up. I need to see um, Nolan Smith show up. Um, I need to see Brandon Graham show up. I need to see, you know, Josh Sweat. Oh, he showed up, you know, week before last. But I need to see him show up more consistently um, because if we're getting the kind of push that we're getting in the middle. These guys on the edges, on the outside, they should be eating. They should be eating. And I was really excited um, last night, and I'll tell you why. I was really excited because that NASCAR package that I was talking about way, way back when they first um, drafted Nolan Smith, I got a chance to see that last night. I saw Hassan Reddick line up on one side and Nolan Smith line up on the other side with Jordan Davis and Jalen Carter and Fletcher Cox in the middle. 
And, and man, I'm telling you, that that NASCAR package on third down situation is going to strike fear in people. I'm a little concerned about the secondary, not so much, you know, the cornerbacks as I am, you know, uh, what they're going to do at the at the slot corner position. Uh, I, I, I was never really a big fan of, you know, um, James Bradbury moving into the slot. And this is why. That position requires a lot of start and stop, a lot of change of direction, because that guy is so far off the line of scrimmage, that slot receiver, that you can't get close enough to put your hands on. So you have to play off and you have to be able to react. And I think that, you know, you want a shorter guy, you know, who's more um, fast twitch, if, 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 you know, if you will, guys that can go from zero to, to 60 like that, you know, a guy with long legs like, um, like James Bradbury, I, I don't know if you guys remember, but he kind of reminds me a little bit of Antonio Cromartie. You know, Antonio was a guy that had really long legs. And just as long as you gave him straight line, he could run with anybody. He could cover anybody. But when you stopped, when you stuttered, when you adjusted your route and he had to stop his feet and start back up again, it was almost like he had to like he had to get going again. Um, so I don't know what the answer is. You know, they had Goodrich in the, in the slot last week. He wasn't even active last night. They saw enough last week to say, OK, we're going to go in a different direction. Now, I'm not sure whether that's James Bradbury coming back and then believing that they could get away with Josh Job outside and put Bradbury, you know, in the slot. But I m m would much rather see Bradbury back at corner and then fig kind of figure out um, who they want to play um, at, at the at the slot corner. Um, a welcome, welcome sight to see Reed Blankenship back. This kid is just a straight up player. Ever since he stepped on the field last year and got his chance, he's been showing and proving that you know he belongs and he should be a starting safety in this league. Baited Baker Mayfield wonderfully. Um, on that interception last night. And I'm, I'm glad to see some things that I've been waiting to see out of Sean Desai's defense. You know, last night, that interception was really um, a robber technique where it made it look like they were in too high safety. And Baker Mayfield never checked back. He saw too high, and he believed he had what he wanted. And on a snap of the ball, Reed Blankenship never moved. And the other safety went to the hole and Reed just kind of snuck down in the robber position. Now, from that robber position, that's great. That's a great position to be in because it allows you to take away the deep digs, you know, the deep end routes and whatnot. And that's exactly what they tried to hit. They tried to clear on the outside and run the dig, you know, underneath it. And Reed Blankenship was sitting right there. Baker never saw him, stepped in front of it, you know, intercepted the ball. Um, so just, I'm just, my thing is, they got to get healthy on the defensive side of the ball. If they can get the full strength, they, they're going to have to go the rest of the year without Avanti Maddox, the torn pec muscle. He's not coming back. It's an opportunity for somebody else to step up. You know, um, that's always the way that I look at it. You know, if a guy gets hurt, yeah, you know, you count it on him. You know, you want, you'd rather have Avanti Maddox on the field, but this is the hand that they've been dealt. And when you get a hand that's dealt to you like this, this is one of those situations where, it's an opportunity for somebody else to step up, you know, and have their and have and be seen and let the coaches know that they can get it done. Lastly, on special teams. Hey, listen, <laughs> it, you had the special teams are starting to look special. Um, you know, Brenton Covey with a 52 yard um, punt return. Um, he averaged 27 yards per return on three returns last night and one kickoff return for 30 yards. Uh, I hope this is a continuing trend. You know, Jake Elliott's still been playing out of his mind because, you know, he connected. He was three for three last night from 36, 38, and 26. And the coverage teams have been a lot better, a lot better. They're getting down, they're covering. They're not giving up a lot of yards. They've gotten better from week to week in their averages from kickoff and punt return. All right? Hey, that's the first segment right there. Uh, We're going to go to a little break right here. Um, a little break from my sponsors. This is the Seth Join the Show presented to you by Bet Parks. Um, but when I come back, we're going to get into about 10 minutes of talk to them before in the second half of the show at, um, at 8 o'clock, I'm going to bring on my good buddy, 
um, um, Tommy Davidson. And we're going to, you know, talk about the Eagles briefly, talk about the rest of the, um, the NFL and what's going on, those hot teams, um, and then just have some fun. All right? I'll see you in a sec. When you open the Bet Parks app, you're in the zone. Winning is always a rush, but the money is in the moment. It's the confidence and underdogs covering. The tension before a clutch turnover. And the pride of a parlay paying off. It's another chance to win big with all-day action. Plus, win your first $10 bet and get $125 in sports bonus bets. You play for fun, you love to win. You bet. Bet Parks. If you understand that success is built on trusted relationships and dependable performance, MidPen Bank is the right bank for you. We're on a mission to prove that the right bankers can make a big difference. We work harder, we get things done, and we're in your corner. With financial centers strategically located throughout the greater Philadelphia region and new locations in central New Jersey, we're ready to bring you the best in commercial and personal banking. Call or visit us today to connect with a professional MidPen banker. Member FDIC. Go Eagles! Welcome to Bridgeview Partners, where IT and business innovation merge. We're not just another tech company. We're your strategic partner in navigating the ever-evolving digital landscape. Our team of experts tailors cutting-edge solutions to fit your unique needs, and ensuring your success is our top priority. Elevate your business with Bridgeview Partners. Discover the power of partnership and tech innovation today. Contact us now to experience the difference. Bridgeview Partners, where innovation meets excellence. Welcome back to the Seth Joyner Show, um, brought to you by Bet Parks. Um, guys, make sure you like um, the page, you subscribe, tell everybody you know to come subscribe. Come join us every Tuesday as we talk about our birds. And um, I'm going to be looking to keep bringing you guys, you know, some interesting, a bunch of different interesting um, um, guests along the way. Um, let's talk about it for a little while. First question here. All right. So Anthony wants to know, how did the Eagles get Hassan Reddick better looks to get him cooking? Um, how do you feel about the linebackers play since Dean has been out? Um, thank you for the compliment. Listen, um, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm not sure whether the hand is an issue for um, Hassan Reddick or not. Um, he looks to be as quick as ever, but I'm not sure, you know, with, with without the full use of his hands because of, you know, that broken hand, that could be, you know, part of what the problem is. Um, I, I think early I kind of talked about, you know, the linebackers. I've, I'm, I've been pleasantly surprised. Um, I think everybody was a little worried when the, the Kobe Dean went down. But these guys, like I said, they've taken advantage of the opportunities. You know, when one door closes for someone, for one person, it opens for the other person. You just got to be, you know, man enough to step into it, to prepare, watch film, put the work in. You'll always be ready. That's the one thing I always tell young guys. You never know because that's what happened to me. You know, you never know when your opportunity is going to crop up and you're going to get a chance to show the organization that you could be more than a special teams player. It's exactly what happened to me. You guys, most of you guys know my story. You know, I got cut the first two games of my rookie season. I come back week three. You know, I believe it's week seven and week eight. You know, buddy calls me in the office. I think I'm getting cut again. And he's like, hey, learn your stuff. I'm um, starting you this week, not because I want to, but because I have to because of all the injuries. But I had been preparing all along so that when that opportunity presented itself, I could just step in and get it done. I think this is the mistake that the young guys make sometimes is that they think that, um, you know, the guys that are playing in front of them, the starters are going to play and they're never going to play and they're going to get their 10 to 15 special teams play every single game. Well, listen, if you're a backup in the National Football League, you are one play, one play away from being on the field, okay? So you don't want opportunity to present itself and you show the, the, the coaching staff that you're not prepared or you're not ready because even if you don't fit in the plans of the team that you're on, the, the thing you want to do is get some good tape on the, out there because all these teams are looking at the same tape. And if all of a sudden they see that you're tearing it up, that you're getting it done, Guess what they're going to do? They're going to turn around when you become available. They're going to present you with an opportunity to be the guy somewhere else. That's what you're working for, all right? Okay, let's jump into a couple of more questions here. Um, Donnie wants to know, what did I think about Sidney Brown 
Um, he made a big time play. He certainly did. That ball that he knocked away from um, from Mike Evans down the end zone was absolutely huge. You know, I listen. I had some reservations about Sidney Brown playing in the slot because I know <clears throat> I know how how aggressive he can be, but he has a similar build as um, as Avante Maddox. You know, a little shorter. You know, very quick change of direction. But he's like super aggressive. I mean, you know, he's trying to hit everything that moves, and there's nothing wrong with that. But sometimes, in when you're in that slot, you got to learn how to be patient. Sometimes they will use your aggression against you. Um, but the time he was in last night, I thought he played extremely well. He might be a guy to look out for. I don't know how serious the thigh injury is that he had. Um, you know, hopefully it's just a, a minor thigh bruise. You know, and he gets an IV and, you know, it'll work some of that lactic acid out and be ready to go on Sunday. But um, I think we've all been waiting for the opportunity. You know, th this this is exactly what I'm saying. Sidney Brown probably wasn't believing or thinking that he was going to get a whole lot of playing time this year. Yeah, circumstances change. Um, and, and coaches sometimes will tell players, hey, be ready. Um, but sometimes guys fall asleep. You know, when you're sitting in those meetings, and you're watching film and you're not on that film, it's real easy to become disinterested. I think that's what happens to Quez Watkins sometimes is that, you know, he knows that he's the fourth, fifth, maybe sixth option sometimes, and he kind of falls asleep sometimes. So when the ball comes to him, it's like, oh, my God, I got a ball. I got a chance, a, a, an opportunity to make a play. And instead of just relaxing and making the play, you know, he winds up, you know, not making the play. But, you know, it's all about preparation. And you got to work your way up through that pot, through that situation and be ready so when the door is open, you can stick your foot in there and kick the door open and take, you know, what's rightfully yours. Okay. So Ed White wants to know, do I, um, do you, do I, th who do you think is stronger, um, Jalen Carter or Jerome Brown? I just think Carter is having a Randy Moss type impact as a rookie, but as a defensive tackle, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. I, I promise you that teams around the league are looking at him play. And I said it last night in post game um, on Jacob Media. Um, I said, man, the teams that pick one through eight um, that let Jalen Carter slip through the cracks, they're going to rule the day that they allowed the Philadelphia Eagles to get him. I think they're going to rule the day that they allowed both of those, you know, those bird dogs to wind up, you know, on the Philadelphia Eagles roster. Because they're going to be good for a long time. As far as strength, I don't know, man. I, I could tell you, you know, Jerome was dominant. You know, he was one of the most dominant players that I had ever seen. Um, but to be honest with you, what I see him doing to, you know, some of these double teams sometimes, the way he attacks one guy or he now he gets himself skinny and gets in the gap between them, um, you know, Jerome was just – brute beat you up and then surprise you with his quickness but this guy is just so strong man he he is just so strong that you know i i don't know i mean and and on top of it you got to say he's stronger because back in our day we didn't have 320 330 pound offensive linemen and he's beating them up you know like they're 285 270 um so i would have to say that it's probably jalen carter and the training the, the, the training regimen is different now. You know, these guys are eating different. They're supplementing different. They're, they're, they're training. They're weightlifting different. Um, their body has a chance to heal, and they, they have a chance to recover from week to week. I mean, we just – we practice like every day was a game, man. You know, live nine on seven, um, live team period, you know, running full sprints after practice. You know, we, we – I, I I always say I left more games on the practice field and in training camp than, you know, I probably could have played another two or three years. All right. Last question before we jump into the um, – before we jump into the – you know, we, we're just going to roll with it until my man Tommy, you know, clicks in. Let's see. Um, um, Timo Lean. Um, is Penny not playing because he can't pass protect? because he's not a good running back uh, for the way they want to run. Well, I'll tell you what, when I, in the game that I saw him play, I was kind of shocked um, because he didn't have any burst. You know, 
he looks to me like the type of running back that's he's not even a one cut. He is just, you know, a straight slasher in one direction. I don't believe um, that he is a good fit for this Eagles roster. Um, and it wouldn't surprise me at some point to see, you know, the Eagles move on and go out and find, you know, that third or fourth guy or another guy to come in um, and fill that void. Because I just, you know, when, when I, I watched him, you know, hit the hole one time, and I watched him, you know, he, he looked good. But anytime he's got to redirect, I don't think he has the foot speed, nor do I believe that he has the burst anymore to actually, um, to actually, you know, be a factor. You know, maybe the all the injuries, you know, that he's, you know, um, endured over his short career is taking a um, is taking a toll. But I can tell you for certain. You know, I looked at him standing on the sideline last night, and he definitely wasn't happy. You know, so there's two things you can do with that. You know, you can shrug it off and get your ass to work, you know, and prove to the Eagles that you deserve a shot. I mean, I think that's why DeAndre Smith, De DeAndre Swift, rather, is operating the way that he's operating. Because, you know, you got to go back and think of week one. They, didn't, they gave him one carry. One carry. He touched the ball one time. And then when he got his chance to play in week two, I just believe that he was of the mindset, you know, I'm going to show you guys the mistake that you made. You're not going to ever play another game as long as I'm in an Eagles uniform where you only give me one carry in a game. And he's he's proven that. You know, and Rashad Penny's gonna he's going to have to figure out a way, you know, to get himself in the mix. I'm not sure that he can do it. You know, I'm not sure that he's in shape to do it. But, you know, that's the issue with him as I see it. OK, so Sean wants to know, um, would I trade for Chen or even Chandler Jones um, for Derek Barnett to win win for both teams? Would you agree? I, listen, as far as Chandler Jones, there's no doubt um, that he's a problem rushing the passer. But right now, um, I think his off the field issues are more important than him playing football. I don't know what they are. I don't think there's very many people that know what those issues are. But I think football is the last thing in the world um, that Chandler Jones would be worrying about. And the Eagles aren't going to, you know, put themselves in that situation. As far as Chen is concerned, you know, I'm not so sure either that you don't, um, you don't ride it out with these young guys that you have. Um, because I think at the end of the day, what winds up happening is, you know, these young guys are getting an opportunity to play. Um, I talked to Ike about this today. I think, you know, when most of us saw the schedule, um, what we thought was, oh, my gosh, you know, the Eagles have the toughest, the toughest schedule um, in the National Football League. And, you know, how are we going to overcome, you know, going from having the second easiest schedule to plan the, the toughest schedule. Well, I, I asked Ike the question, and I'll pose it to you guys. I mean, do you, I, I kind of feel like this. I feel like the schedule has worked out for the Eagles. Um, throughout the first seven games, you know, I mean, they should be 6-0, in my opinion, by the time they get to Miami. Miami will be their first big test, okay? That being said, you know, Everybody across the league, and I know we're only concerned with our Philadelphia Eagles, but everybody else across the league is struggling mightily, man. They're struggling big time. Um, and what better situation than for the Eagles to play against teams that they should beat um, and put, play poorly and win, but through the process, they're getting better. So by the time, and the young guys are getting playing time and opportunities, you know, to make that transition from the pro game to from the um, collegiate game rather to the real pro game. Cause I think that all of their draft picks, you know, for this year and, and last year, those guys are, they're, they're contributing, but to be able to go through that process of, of kind of growing up before you get to those games and those teams that you're going to have to face and get through in the playoffs in order to get to where you want to get to. So I think the, at the end of the day, I, I just believe that, the schedule worked out perfectly, perfectly for the Eagles. Um, playing a few teams that they should beat, 
while they work through their problems and their issues and get it all together. And then, you know, I just believe by week five, six or seven, they should, you know, the entire team should be hitting on all strides. Um, and, and they should be, you know, really, well, I should say hitting on all cylinders and really hitting their stride in, 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 in all phases. You know, at the end of the day, you got to stay healthy. You know, that's a, that's a deal breaker when, you know, you lose, you lose too many guys that mean too much, you know, to your units. Um, it's really, really difficult to continue to play well when that happens. All right. So Pablo Colon wants to know which, which Kelsey Swift combination is better. Ours. Oh, that's pretty good, man. That's pretty good. Hey, listen, um, the one thing we're guaranteed is our Kelsey Swift combination is going to be together for the entire year. We don't know what that one over Kansas City is going to wind up being. That could be over at any moment. So I'll take our combination any day. Touche. <laughs> so Linda wants to know, do you think the improvement of the middle of the field of the defense from the linebackers and the safeties is indicative of the front line play? And do you think it would continue? I think absolutely it'll continue because I've always said, you know, people – make the mistake of believing that, you know, um, the pass rush does not synergistically work with the, the coverage. You know, whatever it is that they did on the back end is going to help the guys up front. The guys up front are going to help those guys, you know, on the back end. Because if you can't cover anybody, you're sure not going to get any sacks. And if you can't sack anybody, you sure don't have time to cover anybody. So it kind of works hand in hand. Um, so absolutely, I think it's a, it's a combination of the two. Not a doubt about it. Xavier, boom. Do you think the teams are game planning for Jalen Carter yet? I mean, how, how are you going to game plan what he does? You know, the game plan is that, you know, you're going to double team. And, they've, and, and teams have done a lot of that throughout the first three games of the season, you know. But they've got a good rotation at defensive tackle. They got five defensive tackles they can play. I don't know if you guys, you know, have noticed what I've noticed, but when I'm, when I'm looking at the Eagles play, what I'm what I am noticing is that they don't have to play as much five man front as they played last year. Um, last year they could not stop the run in the four man front, which forced them to play a lot more five man front, which makes you weaker on the back end. The good part about not having to do that, too, is that, you know, you've got five guys or six guys in the rotation. That allows you, you know, to get more rest because if you only got to put four instead of five, there's less plays that everybody's playing overall, and your rotation gets much, much better, okay? Um, so I think at the end of the day, um, it, it's it's it, it's good. And, and um I, these young kids, man, they, they're they just, they're not surprising us, but they're surprising us, no doubt about it, all right? Christopher Baker wants to know, what position would you like to address before the trade deadline? Uh, now, that's a good, that's a good question. Um, I think on the offensive side of the ball, you're pretty much set. Um, I think once Quez gets healthy, you'll have a nice healthy competition, you know, at the slot position. You got depth at the running back position. You got depth at the offensive line position. And let's just face it, you know, if Jalen goes down, the season is pretty much a wrap anyway. Um, on the defensive side of the ball, I mean, how many guys are you going to get up to speed? Um, if um, Hassan Reddick's hand continues to be, you know, an issue, there might be another rush guy that you can go out and bring in. Um you know, if there's a secondary guy that's out there, you know, worth his salt, um, it's all it's, it's highly likely that um, he would already be on somebody's roster. So, you know, you're talking about bringing in someone at a point in time where they may not even be, um, you know, any real value that's out there. So, you know, why waste your time? All right. Um, one more question, and we're going to go to another break. I'm going to get on the phone and try to find out where my guy is, man. Um, Bob wants to know how can the Eagles get Dallas Goddard more involved? Um, uh, listen, I, I've been saying this ever since last year. Um, Dallas Goddard is too good to only be getting a handful of targets every single game. But when you trade for um receiver one and then you 
um, draft receiver 1A or vice versa, um, there's only one football to go around. And the Eagles have been pretty darn balanced, you know, the last two weeks of running the pass. Now, do you want Jalen Hurst to throw the ball more so that Jalen so that um, Dallas Goddard can get more targets, so that Devontae Smith can get more targets? Um, or do we want to continue to run the ball and realize that the optimal thing is to actually win? Um, doesn't matter how you win, just win. Um, I would love for Dallas to be able to ascend to where I believe that he can be. I truly believe that he's a top, you know, two or three tight end in the National Football League. But until he begins to get, um, until he begins to get the balls that's necessary for him to get the yards and the, and the touchdowns and you know all of those things that he needs to ascend to that position, unfortunately. Um, you know, he's going to be doing what he's doing. Um, and, and I hope that it's not one of those things that upsets him. You know, a lot of players do get upset when they don't get the targets that they're supposed to get. Um, but, I mean, I don't know if you guys are watching him in the run game. He is absolutely mauling and killing people right now. So, um, you know, time will tell. I, I think he's going to have his games. But I think with the amount of talent that we have on the offensive side of the ball, Unfortunately for him, I don't think his numbers are ever going to be um, are, are ever going to allow him to get to that elite status that we all believe um, that um, that he could get to. All right. Quick break. We'll be right back. Are you selling your investment real estate? Are you interested in deferring your tax with a 1031 exchange? At RevX, we're experts in 1031 exchange planning and the use of passive real estate options using DSTs. Not in the midst of an exchange and want to invest in real estate but don't know where to start? Revolution X has institutional grade real estate options for any size investor right now. Set up a consultation at RevXWealth.com. RevX, defer the tax, maximize the gain. At Mandrakia Law, we win big personal injury cases, but we always tell our clients up front that those cases almost always hinge on how much insurance coverage people or companies have. At Mandrakia Law, we don't sell insurance, but we're experts at helping our clients make sure they have the right insurance to protect their businesses and families. Do you have the right insurance? Most people don't. For a consultation, visit mmattorneys.com or call 610-584-0700. Mandrakia Law, aggressive attorneys who get the job done. This is Seth Joyner, top analyst for the birds. I've also analyzed the best auto dealerships, and I drive a Davis Honda. Fall into savings at Davis Honda. Over 300 cars available. And right now, get rates as low as 0.9% at Davis Honda in Burlington. Plus, you'll get two years of free oil changes on every new and used Davis Honda vehicle. See why Davis Honda continues to win outstanding awards for sales and service, including the highest award from Honda, the President's Award. Get to Davis Honda in Burlington. Fall into savings at Davis Honda. J.P. Mascaro and Sons is a family-owned, locally operated, Operated solid waste service company in business for over 60 years. You've seen the red trucks with the blue elephant that symbolizes strength and reliability. Mascaro is different than other national brands. Like the birds, Philadelphia is home. They'll take care of all your waste removal needs. They have it all. An experienced workforce, state-of-the-art equipment, a cutting-edge recycling center, and their own disposal facilities. Call 888-MASCARO or visit jpmascaro.com. Welcome back, guys. I don't know what the deal is with my guests lately, but, you know, I had Warren Sapp that flaked on me last week. Um, you know, Tommy Davidson is actually, you know, shooting a movie right now, so he's trying to he's trying to get away, I understand. Um, if he shows up, great. If not, you know, we'll just keep chatting. Um, I'll take a couple more of your calls, and then, you know, we'll kind of jump around the NFL and talk about, you know, what happened last week. Everybody's talking about, you know, that 70 points by the Miami Dolphins and how quickly they ran up the um, they ran up the power rankings um, charts. And, and you know what? Listen, we went through the same thing with Dallas. Um, everybody was making a big deal about, you know, the Dallas Cowboys and the fact that, oh, you know, they're America's team. They're on point. And next thing you know, they go down to Arizona and lose to the Arizona Cardinals last week bad bad all right um seems like you know we're good to go um i think tommy's ready to rock and roll um let's let's bring him in well maybe he dropped right there um so let's take a question all right xavier wants to know what's my thoughts on cunningham and marl at the linebacker position listen i love what they're doing um 
you know, statistically, it doesn't look like they're actually just killing it. Um, but I think they're doing a solid job. I think they're playing a lot better than anybody thought they could. They both seem to have an understanding of you know where they should fit, you know, in the run defense. And, you know, they're starting to get an understanding when they drop in zone of how to play, you know, routes from deep to short. Um, I, just, I just think they're doing a phenomenal job. And I think the experience of actually being out there is going to help them to continue to play well, you know, as the season progresses. Okay. One above all. Okay. Uh, he wants to know, how do I think Jurgens has fared so far at right guard? Hey, listen, when you don't hear a guy's name, especially as an offensive lineman, when you're not hearing his name, it's usually a good thing. Um, and, you know, you don't rack up two, 259 yards one week and then come back and rack up another 201 yards the next week if everybody across the board isn't playing well. Listen, he's got a perennial pro, pro bowler on his left. He's got a perennial pro bowler on his right. Just as long as the want to is there, they're going to make sure he knows what to do and how to do it and you know, understand how to get it done. He's just in a great position. Um, and I think that, you know, as you watch, um, you know, how this offense continues to progress in order for it to do that, he can't be the weak link. So I think he's playing pretty darn well. All right. NZ Phil fan, shout out to Seth from New Zealand. All right. All right, I, I see you. Congrats, man. I appreciate the follow. Way from New Zealand. Hey, guys, make sure you continue to, you know, hit that like button. Um, go to Seth to join the show on um, YouTube. Please subscribe. You know, in a couple of weeks, I'm going to start some giveaways, I'm trying to get my hands on some Seth Jordan jerseys, um, you know, my logoed hats. Um, you guys remember, you know, a couple of years, two years ago, I gave away, you know, start having my giveaways. Um, mini helmets, um, footballs, we'll bring all of that back. I'm trying to work, you know, with my team on trying to figure out how, how to do it because last year it was, you know, Hey, follow us over here. And if you get enough follows on, on Instagram and we see you on Instagram and know that you followed over on YouTube, you know, that's how we chose it. But, you know, I, I think we got to come up with a better way of allowing everybody to have a legitimate shot at winning some of the gifts and we're gonna have some good stuff coming up um in a couple of weeks stay tuned all right so christopher baker wants to know what is our biggest need on defense linebacker or safety um i would say both i, I think right now we we probably have you know a depth issue um but at the other end of the spectrum i also think that um you know it, it's good for these guys to to get um, as much experience as they can get. Um, and as long as they're playing well, then there's not a need. Um, the thing that scares me is that, you know, you, you, you have a linebacker that you cut that you had to bring back because of injury. Um, you lost, you know, a safety who doubled as a slot guy. Um, you lost your number two slot guy for the year uh, and your number one slot guy for the year. Um, so they can ill afford to continue to, you know, lose players at key positions. At some point in time, you're going to run out of them. Um, and now you have to start pulling guys up off of the practice squad, guys who haven't got gotten a whole lot of, um, you know, playing time and a lot of experience. Because if they had, they wouldn't be on the practice squad. They'd be on your active, your active roster, okay? AJ Sator wants to know, would you put Sidney Jones in the slot? And listen, when he's healthy, absolutely. Um, you watch how he played um, last night. Um, the kid's a competitor. He's going to give you everything he got. Um, and I think, you know, really what wound up happening was the fact that, um, um, you know, Tampa Bay and Mike Evans really tried to um, figure out a way to take advantage of him. And he, he stood up to the test. He actually stood up to the test, man. Um, it's talking to my producer. Is he ready? Or what, what's going on with that there? Okay, it looks like he's trying to connect. We, we may have to get um, Tommy to come on on a day, you know, where he's not shooting and he's got some pretty good, um, you know, internet service. Anyhow, let's keep it rolling. Um, Bob wants to know what's my thought about uh, Nick taking over the play calling from Brian Johnson for a while last night. 
I don't know that that's the case. I mean, we might be assuming that that was the case. Um, I mean, if you've got some confirmation that I don't know about, um, please share it with me. But I haven't heard anything to the effect that that's really, you know, what's going on. So, you know, let's see. We'll see. Joshua wants to know um, how the linebackers are playing. Um, do you put Dean back in as a starter? Well, I mean, listen, I, I don't think you ever get to a place um, where um, you know, a guy should lose his job because of injury. But, you know, if these guys are playing, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, it all depends on how well he is when he actually comes back and how ready he is to actually play. Um all right, let's get one more question. It looks like Tommy may be ready to go for the last 10 minutes of the show. <laughs> um, NZ Philly fan wants to know, do we offer Swift a contract extension? Absolutely not. Um, no need at this point in time um, to lose our minds. Um, JC, GC, uh, what's the scoop on Nolan? Don't know. Your your guess is as good as or better than mine as to you know what's actually going on with him. I don't know. I saw him with a shoulder harness on, um, but I'm not so sure whether, you know, it's actually the shoulder or, or what it is. Um, let's try to bring him in for a couple of minutes and see, you know, if he's good to go. Please. Okay. Where are right, brother? Come on, man. What, what are you doing, man? Hey, man. You know what? You know, I'm, I'm trying to fly like an eagle <laughs> to that sea. You know, doing the, you know, it's the difference between movies and football. You know what I mean? Y'all get four quarters and we don't know when we're going to end. I hear you, brother. I hear you. So, you know what? Listen, man, if I'd have known that you were that you were working today, man, um, I would just schedule another day, man, because I'm like I'm like in the home stretch of my show, man. But I know you love football and you like to talk football, man. I need to get you for a good. The next time I call you, I'm calling you for the whole hour. I'm not calling you just for 30 minutes. Let's just get it done. You know what I mean? Let's just get it done, man. Um, y'all look good. Y'all look good. You know, it's 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 playoffs all the way. This okay. time are they going to the dance, I do believe. And just let loose. So let me let me ask you a question. I know you you, you live in LA or close to LA. You a Rams fan? I'm I'm actually this is gonna be scary. I'm from Washington, DC, right? But I'm a Minnesota Viking fan. Help me with that. Help me understand. That. <laughs> 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 well, you know, in the 70s, you know, the Vikings had a majority black defense. Gotcha. And there wasn't a lot of that happening in the NFL. You know, and and um, they always won. You know, they went to four Super Bowls, but that was a long, long time ago. And I'm just loyal. Mm -hmm. I'm loyal like that with the team. How many you people still are that with me? You kind of breaking up a little bit. I got you. I I'm got right you. here. Hey, listen, how many man. Are that I, loyal? Mm -hmm. Hey, listen. If you're a true fan, you're a true fan. That's what you're supposed to do. That's mm -hmm. what you're supposed to do. Like, yeah, like you, like you like the Cardinals. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna, you know, I ain't gonna say nothing about that. I like the Cardinals. Man, you crazy. <laughs> no, no. The, only thing, listen, the, only, the only thing I like about the Cardinals, they beat them damn Cowboys last week. How about oh, that? Oh, man. Didn't, didn't they look good? You never know in the NFL. You never know. But That's why they gotta, play the game. Yeah, I got to tell you something, though. I owe the Eagles um, a lot of a lot of, um, of my career because that team that you were with, you know, I did my, my comedy special there in Philadelphia. Uh, Jerome Brown. I mean, it was – the. It was just a time. I think you guys were, were like a prototype for a lot of the teams that started to put together really complete squads. Wow. Wow. I appreciate that, bro, man, because, mm -hmm. you know, we, we go way back, man. We go way back. And um, I remember them days when you come through, man, and we get together and hang out, come mm -hmm. watch you do your thing, and then go party it up afterwards, man. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. We've been around for, for – for a good amount of time and, and and just because i'm not an eagle fan don't mean i don't know about no eagles you know i i know, I know all about the carmichael bill Berge. i mean when 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 wilbur montgomery went around that corner on dallas to put them in the super bowl the whole building was shaking 
So listen, man, I, it sounds like I need to get you some Eagles gear. You need to be transformed. Uh-oh. Hold on now. Hold on. We did come Tommy in. Tommy in disguise. Yeah, come, come on, man. Season. Yeah. Come you on. Know, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll, decide, I'll decide around February. Okay. Now, you see, now, but that's the thing about being a Philly fan. You can't wait till February to jump on the wagon because we'll, we'll just – we'll kick your ass off. You well, either going to get on now or you can't get on. Listen, the thing about Philly is they go kick ass anyway. They snowballed <laughs> Santa, and he didn't do that wrong. He was there. That's what he did wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, man. But the last last question before I let you go. Okay. Tell me what you think about um, the seventy points that Miami hung on Denver yesterday, and then after the game, a reporter asked. Um, tongue or two of our lower. Hey, man, you know, why didn't y'all kick the field goal um, and tie the record for the most points ever scored in an in NFL game? And he was like, well, you know, we didn't want to embarrass anybody. Fool, really? You didn't put, you done hung 70 on me and you act like those three points going to make me any less embarrassed than I already am? Going to make a difference. Yeah, going to make a difference. I mean, you, you know, that just was one of the things that it's just going to make it a little bit harder on Mr. Wilson this year, you know? Yeah. Um, but it's the NFL. It's the NFL, and 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 um, anything can happen on Sundays, and nobody knows who's going to be there in that last game. That's that's the best part of what y'all Tommy, it, Tommy, it, a lot of things happen, but 70 points don't happen on Sunday, man. I mean, you know, I've never, if, if, I played, if I played on a team, man, and, they, and, and a team put 70 points up on us, man, I might – I just might cut them, man. I, you know what I'm saying, man. I, I'm, I'm on suicide watch, bro. Yeah, look, it look like a college basketball score. It's you know? crazy, man. Crazy. I, I mean, how I, do you even show up to work to watch that film? Yeah, I don't even know. And then you got the 11 men that are on that D side that did, that still ain't sleep. <laughs> they still haven't been able to sleep, man. They ain't gonna be able Defensive to sleep. Defensive players for a while. are different than offensive players, man. They, they, that's a lot their different. job. That's their job. Now, if those points go up, they go right on them. That follows them to the next team or wherever they at. Oh yeah, you know they'll look at him and ask him. You was a part of that, wasn't you? Mm hmm. <laughs> mm hmm. You were. You were part of that seventy. That seventy ass whipping. You know, but but you know, I'm proud. I'm proud. I'm proud of you, and and just Philadelphia in general. Um, and I'm like I like the way that they they that him and Brown squashed their beef because. Those are the kind of things that can happen in a locker room that can lead you to a uh, McNabb kind of T.O. situation where, right. where their focus is lost. Right. You know? Right. Well, I think they, they've been best friends for a long time. You know, I, I just think that A.J. was frustrated because he wanted to be a part of why the team was headed in the right direction when the team was struggling. And, um, you know, football, football is, a, is an emotional game. And I tell people all the time, you know, I played for Buddy Ryan, and Buddy would say any and everything on Sunday. And he had a saying, he's like, listen, whatever we say to each other, whatever happens on Sunday, it don't count. Because in the heat of the moment, you will say and do almost anything that you really don't mean. And I, I just kind of get the sense that um, that that's the way it was. Hey, will you go back, man? Because my, my my dude, um, um, Harvey Armstrong right there, pull his question up. Let me show him some love right there before. Now, Harvey... An old SMU guy went to went to college at SMU with Wes Hopkins. This is my dude right here, man. And um, he's been firing back and forth at me on Facebook. And um, I just want to show him some love. Um, want to send me? We gotta send me send send him some gear. Who whose gear you want, man? Um, he talking about he talking about some Philadelphia gear. Oh oh, he talking about getting you some gear. That's yeah, what he talking I'll take about. It. I, yeah, I, see, I got people. I got people to play it on other team. I think Harvey played for the Colts, if my memory serves me correct. He trying to get you some Philadelphia gear because he know <laughs> he know that's where you belong, man. <laughs> Come on, I tell you what, it is my sister city. You know, um, um, there's DC and then there's Philly. My best special of all time was in Philadelphia. Anytime I go to do comedy in Philadelphia, you know it's always sold out. And I am a Sixer fan. That's a good thing. 
I don't know where that's going, but that's a good thing. That's a sister. Yeah, well, hey, I've been with them. I've been with them since Doc went there. Right. Yeah, I think a lot of us became Sixers fan because of Doc. I was a Sixers fan when Doc had the big old afro playing mm -hmm. for the Nets, man. And then when he signed with the Sixers, man, I instantly became, you know, a Sixers fan. I played basketball in high school and had to have, mm -hmm. you know, a pair of them Dr. J's with the star on the side, man. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And if Absolutely. you want to know about persistence in sports, then watch the, watch the Philadelphia 76ers because they finally won one and they won it big. And they, yep. beat, they beat the Lakers in Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, man, I got to run. Um, I'll be in contact. Because, you got it. Um, I, I, like, I like this kind of back and forth, man, and I need to get you on for a full you 30 got minutes. It. We got, and we got a full season, man. You know what I mean? Okay. I got you. All, All right, right, my brother. You, see you soon. Thank hey, you. where you headed to Philly? Uh, when am I headed to Philly? I'm headed to Philly in November, like okay. mid-November. All right, you know my birthday is in November. Don't you come through here and not call me, man. Hey, what what day is your birthday? The eighteenth. Okay, mine is the tenth. Okay. Couple Scorpios. No wonder goes. couple Scorpios. No wonder we get along. Oh, Peace, yeah, my brother. It. I'll talk to you soon, man. All, All right. right. Love you much, Sam. All, All right. right. Peace. Folks, that's the show tonight. I apologize for the abbreviated version, but um I'll get Tommy back on, you know, when his schedule permits. You know, he tried to get on tonight, but you know, he's got a lot going on, obviously, shooting a movie. So um gotta be respectful of that. You know, the same way we all got something going on. But let's wrap it right there. This has been the Seth Jordan Show presented to you by Bet Parks. Um that's a wrap for this week. I will see you next Tuesday, same place, same bat channel, same bat time. Remember, take care of each other. And be good to each other, but most of all, love each other. I'll see you guys next week, Philadelphia. Peace.